Hello everyone, welcome back to Moth Plays Dark Cloud 2. In this episode, we're going to be taking a break from the dungeon crawling and the main plot. And we're just going to uh, do an episode about Sita. Um, you'll notice that I'm in the underground water channel, which is actually the hardest place to play Sita at all. Before we get started, I want to show you this. I went ahead and made Steve's um, samurai body. You can see it here. That's one of my that's my favorite body part for Steve. And it also raises his defense. Anyway, so and I made a, a better speed of club than the one we got from uh, the tutorial. So Here's the sphere. We're in the underground water channel. This is actually a fairly easy shot, but I am absolutely confident that somehow or another I'm going to screw it up anyway. So let's give it a try. Well, no, I actually made that one in a hole in one. Amazingly, I actually made a hole in one on that one, and that one could have gone hilariously wrong because, um, you see this right here? The sphere could easily have gone down that shit, and, uh, I would have wasted a shot. And we got treasure chest keys for that one. So, um, probably before this video is over, you'll see why everyone who plays this game ever hates playing Sita in this dungeon. Okay, so second floor. The game set me up with another relatively easy one, but relatively easy is, um, is, uh, deceptive in Sita. On any, in any other dungeon, I could, um, rely on just getting that to a point where I could, um, pop it in, but the, uh, underground water channel has out-of-bounds, uh, areas all over the place, so I'm going to just pop it across the room like so, let it land there, and then try to bank it in from there. Because if I, if I, if I tried something else, it would, um, let's see. I'm going to have to kind of bank it, uh, let's see if we can do it. Uh, it's gonna be crazy no matter what I try. Uh, let's try a curved shot. Yeah, I did not expect that to work. Let me show you uh, what the problem is here. You see all these little um, gutters full of water on the side there? Those are all out of bounds for golf down here. So if the ball lands there, it's out of bounds. And it happens ridiculously often. Every so often this game gives you the uh, Sita equivalent of a pity fuck. Here it is right here. The Sita pity fuck. The ball literally spawns right next to the hole. All you gotta do is just this. Yay! I mean, seriously, that was a putt. There was no possible way to miss that. Got a diamond out of it, though. So, uh, hooray for that. Now, this is more like what I expect from Speeda down here. You see where we are on the map with the sphere? Okay. The hole is clear up there in the top right corner of the map and we have six strokes to get there 
And it ain't gonna be easy, folks. So let's uh, start by at least trying to get it to the other side of this area without going out of bounds. That's what happens in the underground water channel. I hit it too hard and it went exactly where I did not want it to go. Again, and I tried to pull it back a little that time. Uh, try right there, bring it up a little. There we go. That's where I want it to be. And we've got three shots left to get it to the hole, so I don't really expect it to happen. I'm really not expecting it to happen at this point. Uh, see what I mean? Let's go crazy with it and see what happens. This is why people hate playing Sita in the Underground Water Channel. It never really ends well. Throw away this last hit and just watch it go completely nuts. So yeah, that's what happens. I'll take a moment uh, to um, demonstrate a gameplay mechanic I haven't um, had a chance to show you yet. You see the four dots to the left of Monica's sword on the uh, weapon gauge? Um, when you reach a certain point with Monica's weapon, her um, sword can store uh, magical energy and reflect it back at the attacker. When you block, um, when you block attacks from a uh, enemy like the Night Stalker that fire elemental magic. The sword charges up that magic and you can uh, release it any time. You don't necessarily have to use it against the same monster attacking you. You can just store it and use it later. And that's a pretty cool um, ability to have for Monica. Okay, here's another truly ridiculous um, hole of sewer golf. We have four shots to get it from here to the hole. There's a couple of hallways in the way. I mean, this is um, this is this is one of those frustrating throw the controller down things. That does not help at all. You can never be sure what way the ball is going to bounce down here. You might think it's going to bounce off one thing and it ends up bouncing off something else entirely. And then there are all the stupid out of bounds obstacles. Wherever you think it's going to go is not where it goes. Or it gets caught in the pipes like it did there. Um, okay, so now we're going to be playing Speeda in the Rainbow Butterfly Woods. It's a little bit different because there's a little more open space here. Let me run up ahead and show you what we've got. 
here's the sphere, and the hole is right over there, so we might be able to get a clear shot through the trees. Let's give it a try. We've got two shots, and I think I can shoot through. Let's give it a try. Almost perfect. It's a lot easier to do this here in Rainbow Butterfly Wood than it is in the sewers. Incidentally, you may be wondering what medals are for. Uh, what's the point of the medals? Ooh, that's a good item. I'll explain the medals um, yeah, while I'm doing this. Uh, you can exchange uh, medals with Mayor Need. Uh, he'll give you special... Um, Okay, basically, medals are how you buy certain um, alternate costumes for Max and Monica. Mayor Need sells a full outfit set for Max and two full outfits for Monica. For Max, you can get the clown outfit for Mayor Need. And uh, for Monica, you can get the princess outfit and the bikini with the uh, kitty boots and all the kitty accessories. Um, but there's another thing Mayor Needs sells, and you may have noticed that Monica's most basic weapon is back in my inventory. I found this in a treasure chest, and I'm hanging on to it because of a trick that you can do with um, the one seemingly useless item Mayor Needs sells. We'll get to that in a little while. I have 23 medals, and I think I need 35 for what I'm going to do. So, um... Oh, and there's another little item I just bought a little while ago. This is the cooking stove. Uh, this is kind of pointless and silly, but you can use this to cook fish that you catch, and they can be used for minor health recovery. So, um, anyway... So yeah, basically that's it about metals. Uh, here's our first real test of difficulty for Cena in this forest. You see where the sphere is. The uh, the hole is way down there, way down there at the bottom, other end of the map. So. Um, we're clearly not going to make a straight shot there um, for a number of reasons. So first, we're just going to get the ball over across this little pond. Get it onto this path. But well, we're not going to do that, obviously, but, uh... <laughs> that was, uh, pointless. Um... Now to get it... Uh... Ideally, I want to get it over... To the other side of this other pond, this larger pond, without going out of bounds. Let's see if I can do that. Amazingly enough, I did. It was close from there, and I got it exactly where I wanted it. Good. Now, from here, it's a cakewalk. From here, it's a cakewalk. I've got three shots. 
All I need to do is just gently knock it over into this little area. Perfect line. Perfect line. Now it's just a putt straight in. Well, that was a little more than a putt. But you get the idea. <clears throat> I expected that to be harder than it actually was. I have had um, holes like that go horribly wrong for me. Let's see what we got here. Stamina drink, meh. Shitty reward. Shitty reward. Okay, this one is gonna suck. You see where the hole is? And you see where the ball is that I'm running to it? This one is going to really suck. How many shots do I have? I have five shots. There's a safe way to do this and a crazy way to do this. I'm gonna try to do it the safe way. Because doing it the crazy way is going to backfire on me. The safe way is just to get it down to the end of here. That's exactly where I wanted it. And then to kind of, let's see. Ugh. Maybe I wanted it a little bit further over. Because I can't really see what I'm doing. Well, that, that um, didn't quite put it where I wanted it, but at least it didn't go out of bounds. So we can, we're back on track here, let's, uh, let's get it. Right about there. And from here, it's a straight shot. Awesome. <clears throat> and I believe I actually have cleared 10 holes now. So, if, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I have cleared 10 now. Level up powder is a cool thing. Um, you can use it to instantly upgrade a weapon. Uh, I'm, I'm holding on to it for now. Um, I'll need it. I will need it later on in the game. Anyway, since, um, since I, um, I think I've cleared 10 holes. Let's go over to Palm Brinks. And talk to Mina. And um, I haven't really touched on this, but all these characters we're recruiting, all of them actually do something. Um, not necessarily as active support characters. Most of them just sell you things. They'll sell you clothes. They'll sell you hair ornaments. They'll sell you um, bait, uh, amulets, weapons, and so forth. But every character does something.
so now we've got her. And there's still several Cita Gulls here in the forest, but I'll pick up on those later. Uh, now we might as well go on back to uh, Starlight Canyon and cover another floor. Okay, so before we move on with balance, uh, Starlight Canyon, I want to uh, do, take care of a couple things and show you a couple things. First of all, while I've been working on weapons, uh, I actually need to work on this one for a minute. Um, let's see. Lightning Beast and Scale. Remember that um, earlier I showed you that Max's gun has now reached a level where uh, it can't be built up any further until I beat certain enemies later on? Well now I have the same thing going on with Monica's sword. But let's, uh, look here. We need to work on this one too. and one scale. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I have 41 medals right now, so we're going to exchange some of those in a second. But first I want to explain something and show you what's going on with Monica's weapons. Okay. I've, um... Okay, so Monica now has the Platinum Armband. So, um... That's, uh, uh it's getting stronger. And now her sword... This is the sword she has right now, the Claymore, and you'll notice that uh, the Claymore, it now has a, an enemy lock gate on it. Um, I will be building this Claymore up over the course of the game into the Island King, which many contend is the strongest weapon Monica has, and to an extent that is true, because the Island King's maximum attack power is 500. <clears throat> which is the highest maximum attack power in the game. But, while many contend that makes the Island King the strongest weapon, I disagree because, for one thing, they're ignoring the rest of the weapon stats, which range in the 200 to 250 variety. They're also ignoring the fact that the Island King's combo is very slow. It's a very slow weapon. Now, Before we get into that any further, I'm going to do something I rarely do. I'm going to uh, buy the speech box upgrade for Steve because this is um <clears throat> this is something a lot of people find amusing. I find it tiresome after a while. But since, uh, since this is to entertain, we will do that, and, um, now I need to do some business back here first. Um, over the course of my speed of playing, I've accumulated quite a bit of, uh, wealth, 
so we shouldn't have too much money problems for a while. Too much money problems. I English good. Durr. Okay, let's sell this. I don't need this. Buy one more gold bar. Notice I already have eight gold bars. <clears throat> and now I have nine. So we've got the money for a while. Now. We're going to trade 40 medals. <clears throat> for a name change ticket. Now, <clears throat> I want to save first to make sure I don't screw this up. Alright, let me explain what the name change ticket does. The name change ticket basically it lets you change the name of any weapon. Like, let's say this long sword right here. Let's say I wanted to change its name to something like Troll Fucker or Turd Breaker or Pussy Sword. You know, like I was a uh, frat boy. A drunk frat boy or a 12 year old. I can do that with the name change ticket. But that's, um. That's not the true purpose of the name change ticket. The name change ticket is actually a uh, kind of a hack. And I need to remember how to actually use it. Okay, that's not how you use it. That's how you use it. Okay, you see how I changed the name up here to here? Now watch this. This is a long sword. We're going to change its name. Um. Okay. We're going to change its name to... happened look what happened the long sword actually became the dark cloud which is the strongest sword Monica has now you look at its base stats those are just its base stats let me explain why this is the strongest weapon for Monica first of all it has a very fast multiple hit combo it does a lot of damage in one combo its maximum attack is only 300 which as I said the Island Kings is 500 but every stat for the weapon except durability because durability maxes out at 99 for any weapon every stat for the Dark Cloud maxes out at 300 300's across the board Flame, Chill, Lightning, Cyclone, Smash, Exorcism, Beast, Scale, everything maxes out at 300. So, in just a second here, I'm going to be showing you what happens when Monica is equipped with even just the base level Dark Cloud. Oh, and it has some synthesis points. So, we're going to... Spectrumize a poison coin. And a hunter crystal onto this dark cloud.
And now, we are going to enter uh, Starlight Canyon, and you're going to see what this sword can do. Oh, we're at the Yorda's Valley, so we're actually at a uh, event. I thought this was a little further up. I thought this was a little further up. I'm <laughs> so this is actually an important event here. What a huge tree! It's the Yorda tree. It's holy. They say it's been here for thousands of years. First time I've ever seen it, though. Wow. I didn't think it would be this big. That's a scoop. Okay. Well, that's no. not good. Lynn. Master, why do you want to be a sage? Hmm, that's a good question. Maybe because everyone respects them, treats them like royalty. That's not right. Don't you mean something like, so I can save the world? <laughs> <laughs> that works too. To tell the truth, I want to be the kind of person who can put everyone else at ease. Everyone can count on a sage. With a dependable person nearby, danger is always far away. That's what a sage is. Don't you think you'd want someone like that near you? Someone to count on? My I'm not sure that's the definition of a sage. From the desert. Everyone was constantly on edge, never knowing when they would strike next. I mean, I'm As pretty child, sure that's I not what a wonder, sage does. Isn't there someone strong out there who can take care of these thugs? What about the sages I read about in fairy tales? Where are they? I mean, I'm pretty sure sages are just, you know, wise men and not, like, Hero warriors. Well, I was about to find out. It was when the thieves were plundering the village one day. A single robed man showed up out of nowhere. He used mysterious magic to defeat the raiders one by one and defend the village. I thought this must be who I've been waiting for. So I asked him, Are you a sage? I said. He replied, Me? I'm no sage. I could never come close. A sage is a person who can defend others just by being there, he said. Just by being there? Is that even possible? That's what I want to do. If I can. This game is a weird so definition that sage of sage. Was my role model. Hmm. Sages are great people, aren't they? So, if you can use a lot of magic, then... You can be a sage? Hmm, I wonder. Even I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's generally not a good sign. Oh lord, Who here it that? comes. It's a memo leader. 
So that's it, huh? Now that's a ja that's a Japanese demon of legend. That's um. <clears throat> Memo eater. Well, look it up online. That's right. I'm not it gonna explain it. It gets into people's heads and eats up their memories. More importantly, it's a mini boss. It's a mid boss. We're fixing to fight a mid boss here. And it's easiest to fight this with the ride pod. There's no trick to this one, it's just a, uh, a mid boss. But it's Ready also a scoop we need. Alright, let's go! That one goes down pretty easy. I remembered everything. All of it. It was under this tree that my master told me his dreams of being a sage. Ah, oh, must go to the lighthouse. Save Master Crest. Right, the lighthouse. That's where you and Crest were attacked. So if we go there, we can save Crest. Right, let's go. Ugh. Okay. All right. Okay, now you'll notice that there's a fish goal now. Up until this point, the canyon has been pretty high up. At this point, um, we're low enough that we're going to see rivers, and we can fish here now, too. So we're going to switch over to Monica. And... Now we're going to see what the dark cloud can do. Also, that's just a really cool looking sword. I mean, look at it. See how much damage it's doing there? Ooh, an absorption coin. That'll come in handy. Ah. I hate these things. I hate them. Ah! 
speak anything that I hate. Anyway, yeah, um, like I said, for my money, the Dark Cloud is Monica's ultimate sword, and you don't really need another sword, but, um, just for shits and giggles, I am going to build up an Island King, um, just so you can see what the Island King looks like. But that's gonna take a while. In the meantime, we already have one of the terminal weapons. And yes, Dark Cloud is a terminal weapon. That means that there there is nothing further it can build up into. Uh, it can just keep getting stronger until it maxes out its stats. And it goes through everything. Which shall it be? Very good. Here you are. Oh, damn, I could use that wealth coin. Wealth coin adds wealth attribute to a weapon. It means enemies drop more money. Um, or it can negate the poverty effect. Like the effect I have on Max's Q shot. Which I really need to get rid of. The the poverty effect, not the not the Q shot. I wouldn't give up the Q shot for anything. Except for when I can upgrade it to a uh, steel gun. Let Monica's magic just because she has a ultimate sword. Oh yeah, remember that trick? What I mean about that sword, look at it, it's just, it's just badass. Okay. So now that all that's out of the way, let's play some speed up. Let's see, there's the sphere, I saw it right up ahead, didn't I, or did I? I thought I saw it. I guess not. Uh, let's find it using the map. Let's see. Oh! Oh, look at that! It's right next to the hole, but it's blue. And the hole's blue. So... This is gonna... It's only going to give me one stroke and it's going to take a trick shot, watch. It's going to take a trick shot. There's 
only going to give me one stroke. And that's a trick shot. I hate these short trick shots. Um, but it looks like I should be able to do this one. Let's just give it a try. Nope. My aim was off. Oh well. Okay, so this time we're going to use Max's right hand weapon. And this time, uh, oh, I didn't even go fishing on the last one. Oh well. I forgot to go fishing. I guess I better equip the wrench and not the golf club, huh? That would be helpful. Ooh, right out of the gate, bad luck. Speaking of bad luck. deal with those this time. They're not that hard though. Oh, uh, but that is. That is. Oh shit. This little fucker was just right behind him. Uh oh. Him, but we can get there. Okay. Oh crap. That's bad. Uh, let, you can't let the dragon hit you like that, because if he does, uh, you get petrified. Shit. I didn't mean to let him hit me like that, and uh, there are only a couple of items that can cure that. Oh shit. hit R2 there. If you've got a PlayStation 4, you know that the uh, PS4's R2 triggers are a little sensitive. Oh. That I definitely need right now.
Yeah, if I'm gonna be fighting those dragons up, for, up close and personal like that, I definitely need that right now. Like crazy. Like you would not believe. Also that. That's important. Funny looking, wasn't it? But yay, yay! Okay. Oh shit! Okay, before anything else, heal up a bit. And, uh... to face two of them at the same time like that before. That was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. I've never just had to have two of them at the same time before like that. Um... Oh shit, I got hit with thirst status, didn't I? Yep. Just in case. Looks like there's not that much left here, so... Whatever's left is right around this corner. Oh, thank God! Awesome! Okay. Whew. Two medals at once. Amazing. Now let's find the... Okay, I see it. It is yonder. I wonder where the hole is. Yes, I do. Good. Uh, and there's the sphere. So we have four shots, and the hole's in sight. Um, I think I'm going to try to. Get it just a little bit closer and kind of see if I can change the color. Uh, 
Okay. Um, let's see what happens if I just... I know it's not the right color, but let's try something here. Well, I had the right idea. My execution was just a little off. Um... Yeah... See, the problem is these narrow ledges. The problem is these narrow ledges. Okay, let's see... Damn. Hit it too short. But it's red now, I think. Is it? Let's just try a straight shot. Let's see what happens. Damn! Oh well. And... I'm not gonna go go, uh, go fishing here just yet. Anyway, so that'll be it for this episode. And this is Mr. Wall signing out. I'll see you next adventure when hopefully we'll get to the end of chapter three.